All right, bro. So this is gonna be something real shocking. Serial killers with the highest known victim count. Now, see, we're gonna go to the American ones. We see all of these here from other countries. Strictly the American ones. Gary Ridgeway, United States, 49 victims, possibly 71 to 90 plus. Okay, so let's go check out Gary Ridgeway. Oh, his adult life. Ridgeway graduated from Taiyi High School. This is him. So you guys know. Tai High School in 1969 and married his 19-year-old high school girlfriend, Claudia Craig. He joined the U.S. Navy and was sent to Vietnam. Okay, that's one. Okay, yeah, all right, whatever. Just one. I'm going to get him out the way, so we'll move to the next one. So after Gary Ridgeway, we have Ted Bundy. Let's check out Ted Bundy. Childhood. This is Ted Bundy. So you guys know. Oh, and his possible victims are, you know, between 35 and 36 plus. And it says that, you know, that his father's identity was never determined with any degree of certainty. His birth certificate assigned paternity to a salesman and Air Force veteran named Lloyd Marshall. But Louise later claimed that she had been seduced by a sailor whose name had been Jack Worthington. Years later, years later investigators would find no record of anyone by that name in Navy or Merchant Marine archives. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna get him out the way. The next one is John Wayne Gacy. 33. 33. Thirty-four plus. All right. See John Wayne Gacy. This right here, early life. John Wayne Gacy Jr. was born in Chicago, Illinois, on March 17, 1942. The only son, and second of three children, born to John Stanley Gacy, an auto repair machinist and World War One veteran. Okay. Alright, yeah. It's wild, isn't it? No, nah, it's not wild. It's no, nah, it's just a just a coincidence, bro. It's, you know, just a coincidence. Okay. Serial killers with thirty victims or fewer. Dean Carroll. We're gonna go check him out. Oh, Dean Carroll. And look at this. US Army Service. Carroll was drafted into the US Army on August nineteenth, you know what I'm saying? Fort Hood. Honorable discharge. Okay. Coincidence, right? No coincidence. I'm going straight down this line. We're going each one after each one. So y'all can see this. So the next one is Juan Vajelo. Oh no, he's not, you know. He's not even American really, honestly. You know, he's from somewhere else. You know, but we're still gonna mention this though. He had a mental breakdown. Mental breakdown. In late December, a flood occurred on the Yuba and Feather Rivers. It was one of the most widespread and destructive of any in the recorded history of Northern California. A rush of water broke through the West Levee and flooded 150 square miles, killing 38 people. Corona was strangely affected, strangely affected by the death and destruction and had a mental breakdown. He believed everyone had died in the flood and that he was living in a land of ghosts. And then he went on a rampage and started killing people. Started killing people. I think how many people he killed? 25 people. Strangely affected. Mental breakdown. So, after that, we'll go to Ronald Dominique. There's nothing on him, but for Earl, Earl Nelson. Check this out. So, this is Earl Nelson. Early life. Nelson was born Earl Leonard Farrell on May 12th. Nah, this ain't what I meant to read, my bad. Nelson began his career, criminal career, at a young age. He was sentenced to two years at San Quentin State Prison 
1915 after breaking into a cabin he believed had been abandoned. Upon being released from prison in 1917, he enlisted in the U.S. Army, but deserted after six weeks. He repeated this pattern on several occasions, enlisting in the U.S. Navy and military under different names before deserting. Come on, man. How many people do it? Come on now, bro. 22 plus week. Come on now, man. I mean, hey. Patrick Kearney. Now, what you notice about the Patrick Kearney is this. When you read it, when you read Patrick Kearney, you find nothing. Nothing about the military. Nothing at all. They're not, they don't mention it in here. But guess what? When you do real research, that's what you find. This is about him, by the way. Original article, July 11, 1977. And this is what you read. Right here. Army and marriage. This is about, you know, they're talking about both of them, by the way. He had a lover. You know, he was gay. In 1959, they're talking about David Hill. He dropped out of high school and joined the Army, only to be di discharged soon after his induction for an unspecified medical disorder. Okay. And then he said this. In 1962, about the time Mr. Hill moved to California, Patrick Kearney, fresh from a hitch in the Air Force, took a job as an electrical engineer with the Hughes Aircraft Corporation, a major defense contractor that specializes in building military satellites. They don't mention this at all. They don't mention it at all, bro. They don't mention that. You know what I'm saying? Go to the original article and you'll find that. No mention of his military life. That's just a coincidence though, right? You know? It's there, bro. It's there. So this one right here. The last one. William Bonnet. So what you find out about William Bonnet? Oh! Engagement and the U.S. Air Force. Shortly after graduating high school in 1965, Bennett became enra engaged to marry. This engagement had largely been at the behest of his mother, who believed the prospect of marriage would quell her son's evident sexual preference for males. The same year of his graduation, Bonnet joined the Air Force. He later served five months of active duty in the Vietnam Milit War as an aerial gunner, logging over 700 hours of combat and patrol time. Bonnet was later claimed his experience in Vietnam had instilled a belief within him that human life is overvalued. Eh. That's all I have to say, bro. So with this being known, I went straight down the line of all of these, you know what I'm saying, of the, you know, United States ones with the highest body count of serial killers. And y'all saw for yourselves what it has to show. So you don't have to believe me at all. But just question that. Why isn't that being talked about in the media? This is clearly all of the highest body counts in America. It's, come on now, bro. MK or nah? MK or nah? I'm just here drawing up conclusions of things in which I've, you know, noticed. Because... It's wild to me that things like this are able to go on, but yet nobody says anything. I could keep going, too. I really can. I really, really can. So, yeah, y'all give me y'all thoughts on this, bro. Just something I've been thinking about for a while, and I felt as if I needed to make a video on it. So y'all can see for yourselves, you know, while I do this, that I show y'all. It's not a game, bro. There is more people I can use in America as an example. I can use African Americans as examples with high body counts. Serial killers. That have shown this same pattern in which, you know, you find certain things. See, I'm talking about this because, honestly, bro, I'm not scared to die, bro. Putting this out there because I'm not scared to die. A lot of y'all motherfuckers be scared, bro. Like, I'm at the point in my life where... Or just in my in my spirituality to where what's the point of being silent? To be like the rest of y'all? 
be complacent. You don't speak your mind in life, then what's the point of you living, bro? If you don't speak your mind in life, what's the point of living? Why? I mean, what else is there to do? Be fake with everybody else? Pretend to care about redundant things? Bro, you put your life on the line. I'm, I'm exposing this, bro. You got the serial killer in which you know was killing people in Jacksonville, Florida, the black man. That dude right there, killing black single mothers. He had a military background. A majority of them do, bro. You better start using your mind out here, man. You better start really using your mind, bro. People just don't get it. I can go into the darker aspects about these things. You know what I'm saying? Project, eh, y'all not ready for it. I mentioned it on super old videos. People just don't get it, though. You scared. My, man, look, people be coming in my comment section telling me about you know, they scared to get on Facebook. They don't mess with Facebook. Get your scary ass on. Nigga, they know all that shit anyways. Why are you a threat, bro? You niggas ain't saying nothing, bro. Fuck your information. Fuck your little text and all that weird ass shit y'all got in y'all phone, bro. Niggas scared, bro. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's just me, bro. I just look at this shit differently. I don't give a fuck, bro. I really, really don't. To live in a world full of fake motherfuckers who can't put shit together. Can't put two and two together because they scared to. Imagine a child being scared to, you know, solve a math problem that's super easy. But yet the fear of it being true scares him. That's what y'all look like as grown individuals. Quote unquote grown. I'm the motherfucker making these videos. Niggas talking about being scared to, when I was doing my little Facebook live, motherfuckers was scared to come on and comment and ask me questions. But yeah, the whole time they ain't saying nothing. What information do you are you exposing that makes you a real threat, bro? More of a threat than me. Fuck out of here, bro. I'm gone. Fuck this shit.